The most important part of your brain is almost always blown off in patients before they come and see me. And even worse, they're gaslit over. I'm not talking about the cortex or the outer layer of your brain that we typically associate with your mood and consciousness. I'm talking about the deeper part of your brain in the hypothalamus. That's the command center of your hormones. This part of your brain can significantly deteriorate with age and with environmental toxins, which can significantly impact memory, mood, heart disease, sleep, and even bone and muscle strength. And you're going to learn why so many doctors are afraid of treating it, even though millions of Americans, especially women, have suffered and been gaslit over it in the last 20 years. And tens of thousands of women have likely died prematurely because of it. The hypothalamus is part of the primitive brain, but some people blow it off as the reptilian brain and think it's unimportant. That couldn't be farther from the truth and that misunderstanding has hurt so many of my patients. That primitive part of the brain controls vital hormones that can cause real trouble in patients if they're not in balance. The most common hormones are your thyroid hormones, the hormones of your adrenal gland that produce cortisol, and the so-called sex steroids testosterone, estrogen, and progesterone. Sex hormones are also called reproductive hormones, and that's a real shame because they control much, much more than just reproductive function. But it makes my patients and other doctors shy to talk about them because of the stigma of talking about sexual function or libido, even though those same hormones are vital to reduce heart attack risk, bone fractures, muscle atrophy, and likely stroke and other cognitive impairments. Have you ever felt blown off by a doctor when asking about hormones? Hormones, let me know in the comments below. But that's not even the main reason why most doctors don't talk about hormone replacement. It's way more controversial and we'll get to it in just a minute. This part of your brain, the hypothalamus, has a very hard job to delicately balance dozens of hormones and its function gets impaired as early as your 30s when age-related hypothalamic dysfunction can lead to all sorts of concerns, especially in women, independent of the environmental toxins that can hasten that progression. And hormones are like a family. They all need to play together well because if someone is out of line, they can wreak havoc. And in your body, that havoc can be a heart attack, cancer, a broken bone, cognitive impairment, or depression. The problem is that as we age, three bad things happen to that part of your brain. The first is inflammation, the second is senescence, or the conversion of normal cells to zombie cells, and the third is abnormal protein folding. And the older we get, the more inflammation in the body causes more hormonal dysregulation, which in turn causes more inflammation, and you have a vicious cycle going there unless you can rebalance the hormones that are out of whack. That main hormone regulator, the hypothalamus deep in your brain, is like the master hormone regulator. And as it becomes dysfunctional with age, it's like a bad thermostat that gets hot and cold and AC is fighting against the heat. As we age, look at this chart of how many hormones go out of balance and the diseases that can come from them. Every organ gets affected by aging and hormones play a big part in that aging process. Now, just because something changes with aging doesn't mean that it needs to be fixed because some of those changes might be beneficial, like reduced growth hormone signaling that reduces with age, presumably to reduce the risk of cancer growth. On the other hand, our vision also degrades with age and hopefully nobody settles for blurry vision and walking into walls. We all agree that corrective lenses are important for our well-being and our safety. The same with hearing loss, where hearing aids can play a big role in reducing the risk of cognitive impairment. So correcting other changes with aging is also important, especially in the hypothalamus, if it can't keep up with the needs for balancing testosterone, estrogen, and progesterone. Like we said earlier, these hormones cover a lot more than just sexual desire. Look at this well-known study from Finland that showed that women who are on HRT, or hormone replacement therapy, have one half the risk of dying from breast cancer compared to women who are not on hormone replacement therapy. That's an impressive risk reduction. Then there's the famous Danish randomized controlled trial that showed a 50% lower chance of death from heart attacks 
in women receiving hormone replacement therapy versus those who did not. Given that heart disease is the number one cause of death in women, this should be a huge deal, shouldn't it? Then how about in the brain itself? Because as we age, especially women as they go through menopause, there's an increased risk of depression and mood disturbances. In this randomized clinical trial, estrogen and progesterone replacement was shown to reduce the risk of depression in women going through perimenopause and in postmenopause. Ask yourself how often doctors are prescribing antidepressants. Now, I'm not anti-antidepressant, if you know what I mean, but ask yourself, are we treating a Prozac deficiency or should we be addressing a hormone deficiency because of the hypothalamus changing with age? And then there's bone health with a 30% reduction in bone fracture risk in the Women's Health Initiative. But that same study is infamous for how it reduced HRT use amongst millions of women after it was published. Just look at this graph showing the number of HRT prescriptions plummeting after it came out. So why did this happen? Because the WHI, or the Women's Health Initiative, showed an increase in breast cancer that led to the investigators to halt this trial early, which is a really bad sign in a research study. And that sparked a deep fear in the medical community, really scaring many doctors from ever prescribing hormones again. No doctor wants to put their patients on medications that might cause cancer, so that fear would be justified if it weren't for some deep nuances and issues with how that study was designed. For example, the estrogen form used in the WHI over 20 years ago was from horse urine and the progesterone was a synthetic progesterone not found in nature. Neither of those two are commonly used anymore, so the data from that study might not mean a lot. Unfortunately, the damage has been done to millions of women who missed the sensitive time window when they should have started HRT after the WHI came out. The ideal time frame is within 10 years of menopause or under the age of 60. And that fearful mindset continues well into today. Just look at this study where about half of women with troubling symptoms never talked about hormones with their doctor. And this controversy has even led to the FDA recently having an expert panel discussion to consider removing some of these perhaps outdated warnings that have scared doctors from having these important discussions with their patients, especially for women's health. The point is that women in particular are likely being hurt by misinterpretations of these old studies. And I didn't appreciate how badly my patients were being gaslit until I started asking them directly. You see, my patients would traditionally come to me for help with depression, anxiety, or PTSD using treatments like ketamine or the stellate ganglion block or NAD. But I quickly found that I was the first doctor to ever ask about their hormone health. Not their primary care doctor, not their ob guide, not their endocrinologist, but here discussing mental health. This frustrated me. Why are we talking about Xanax before talking about our natural hormones? This is why I've changed my practice style to care for these folks because we have better tools than ever before to live healthier and feel better with hormone replacement therapy therapy when used correctly. There are many subtleties you need to discuss with your doctor before starting HRT because every form has different risks and benefits, like the differences between pills, patches, creams, or pellets. And there are different ways of measuring the biomarkers in your body based on the specific formulation you're taking. And in some of my patients, their genes will predict what form is optimal for them. So it's not a one size fits all treatment. So I want you to speak up with your doctor and talk about your hormones. Enough of this stigma and fear that ends up hurting so many of my patients and probably many of you watching out there. Have you ever felt blown off asking about your hormones? Let me know in the comments below. And you can learn more about how I treat my patients by visiting my San Francisco Clinic's website at www.claris-health.com in the link below. If you learned something new, please share with your loved ones, hit the like button, and subscribe to keep up with all of my videos. And remember that you have more power over your health than you've probably ever been told.